Hello Internet, I'm Guy. In this episode I'm going to be making two parts. This part right here which is called a piston wrist and is part of the power piston assembly as you can see here. And then this part here is um, called a cylinder plug and it goes in to um, part of the cylinder right here. And this one is a lot easier to make. I didn't have too much trouble with this one. But this one I took two tries. I really messed it up the first time because I didn't have my sequence of operations correct. So stick with me while I learn a few lessons and maybe you will too. My first step is to establish the length as 0.51 as it's called out. So I'm just using my caliper to draw a little line there just so I know where that depth is. Now I'm going to reduce the diameter down to the dimension called out, which is 0.19 inch diameter. Non-critical diameter, otherwise they'd call it out to a thousandths resolution, resolution. So now you see I've gone a little past my mark, uh, and that's deliberate, so I have some room to uh, cut it off later. I'm doing very rough passes here, and um, I'm going to stop in a moment and check my dimension. See how close I am, and then from there I can calculate the final finishing cuts. Taking it a lot slower now. And yeah, that's 0.195, which is certainly close enough. So now I need to mark off the shoulder that has to be turned down to 0.138 inches. Marking that roughly. And since there's a fair amount of stick out there, I'm going fairly carefully and slowly. Um, don't want to stress that brass too much. Turning the crank handles very slowly there, as you can see. Just kind of tiptoeing through that cut, not to, not to stress the brass. So now I'm setting up my parting blade uh, to be parallel with the end of the piece, so now I know where to cut it off. And as you can see, my DRO is showing the dimension that I'm going to go over to the desired dimension there, roughly. And part it off. Foreshadowing though, I forgot to do a bunch of different operations here, which I really should have before I even parted it off. and. I should have done it a whole different sequence, but, you know, I'm just going to plug away and uh, figure it out eventually. So I'm setting up my slitting saw, and again, I didn't look <clears throat> carefully enough at the plans to realize that I'm actually setting this up to slit at the wrong end. So at a certain point... So I muddled along for another second or so and then realized, okay, abandon ship, start over, and I found another piece of stock. There's the old piece that, uh, nope, not doing that. This stock here is about the right diameter. Yay! All right, I just happen to have that sitting around. So what I need to do is cut the slot first to that depth right there, as called out by my thumb right there. That's what I need next. All right, so I'm going to load up that stock in the collet chuck, which is a close enough dimension that I can jam that in there. Recentering again using my DRO to get the half height, and then I'm going to snug up the cutter right up against the end so I know a starting reference dimension and start cutting. Very slowly and very carefully again, because I have a fair amount of stick out, and this is a 0 .020 cutter and that slot needs to be 0 0.070. So this is the first of several passes. Now I went through in uh, this direction on the first pass and now I've just adjusted my height. And now it's starting to really push hard against that stick out and getting catches, as you can see. So I'm committed to that cut and I might as well finish it out, but it was a little jumpy and a little scary there, so I've learned my lesson. Now I need to know, know to go the other direction for the next few passes, where I'm going to change my height very slightly 
I'm going to do two passes above and two passes below that original uh, 20 thousandths cut. So there I am going for the higher cut. And just being very careful, you know, turning the crank handle really slowly. So now I've got it back in the collet cut on the milling machine and I'm finding uh, center of that uh, because I have to drill a little borehole right in there and this is finding the end. I need to drill it with a 55 drill and then ream it out to a 0.063 drill, which is a number 52. So you can see it's deflecting there. So I'm just going to go very gently to get my center drill in there. Just passing through there, just enough. Starting again with my number 55 drill, as called out in the plans. Going all the way through and watching that uh, deflection carefully so I don't over deflect and create an off center hole. Now switching to the uh, 52 drill, which is 0.063 as called out in the plans. So now I'm just going to do a little cleanup with some 440 paper. Um, again, the exterior dimension of this part is non critical. Um, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, take off some of the burrs, make it look pretty. It won't be entirely visible in the final uh, part, but there's nothing wrong with making something look pretty. So now I've got my slot cutter um, set up, and I'm using my ruler to find align the left edge of the cutter with the left edge of the end of the workpiece here. And now I know exactly how far to move over. So I'm getting that into position to make my cut. Then I'm going to start cutting and just going in very gently. I realize this is a wide cutter and there's a fair amount of stick out again. And yeah, it's beginning to make little noises. And yeah, not good. No, that's not good. Not going to work for me. Got to go to plan B here. So I've set up my parting tool and I'm going to go into the prescribed depth using my DRO to get it exactly right. And one step at a time here. I'm just going to increment in one pass at a time, very carefully. And I'm going to overshoot deliberately so I have a, a clearance area to cut the whole part off, to part it off. So now I have a little extra room and I'm going to part this whole thing off. Very carefully, there it is, looking good. So now I've got my die follower that I built uh, quite a while ago for my lathe. And I'm going to line that up because this needs to be tapped for a 632 thread here. And I had to flip that die over hoping that it would catch and dig into that brass, but it's just not going on there. And at a certain point I realized this isn't going to work. Uh, you can see I'm really forcing it and all it's doing is kind of chewing up the brass and yeah, not going to happen. So I'm just going to turn that little uh, nub off of there and what I've decided to do is actually tap a hole for the 632 bolt that needs to go in there and thread it in and glue it in with Loctite. So using a center drill and then a tap drill, very little uh, amount of depth to go there, setting up my tap and in the tap follower in the tailstock doesn't take much to go in there and just turning it by hand very carefully break that loose again and clear it out so now I have a number six bolt I'm going to use Loctite 638 here the green stuff just insert that far enough that that glue will take and uh, hold the heat hopefully gonna let that set for a little bit and come back and yeah, that, that's going to work. It's not sticking out too far on the inside. Then I cut it down with a hacksaw off camera, and there it is. That, that will work. It's basically what the plans call for, but done it my way. So on to the cylinder plug made from 5.8 aluminum stock provided by the kit. 
just put it up in my three drawer chuck. Concentricity is not a big deal, but most of these holes are all going to be made in the same pass. So, of course, surfacing off the end. And then turning it down to the call out diameter. This is called out as 0.501 inches so that it would be a friction fit into a 0.5 inch hole. So I'm just turning that dimension down. So that pass mic'd out at 0.501 and I'm fairly happy with that. Now I've got to do the 732nd inch drill through. Notice it's called out as a fractional drill so it's not a precise diameter hole again. Um, you can assume preci precision from whether or not they call out a fractional drill or uh, whether they call a thousandths tolerance out. So this is the 732nd inch drill going through all the way. So they're calling out an 1132nd drill, uh, 7 sixteenths deep here. I'm going to start with an undersized drill first and go the required 3 eighths of an inch deep. Uh, this is going to be a tap drill for a 3 8 by 32 tap. So I'm going to get that just nicely done to the prescribed depth. I'm going to do a little chamfer first to help that tap go in there. Just pushing in there firmly to get it riding into the cut. That worked out pretty good. So now I'm going to get in with there with the tap. This is the only tool so far I've had to buy specifically for this project. I have a fairly good collection of taps, but not a fine thread like this. This is going pretty well. I'm using some WD-40 as lubrication and just kind of twisting the two parts. Um, I've got the chuck uh, loose in the Morse taper in the tailstock, so I can rotate that freely. In retrospect, I could have just turned the head and left it tight in the chuck in the in the tailstock, but it worked out. So I'm going to test fit the glass cylinder here, which has a graphite plug in it, which is the piston that rides in that cylinder. This is called out as a dash pot, which I'm presuming is some kind of automotive part that they're using in this application. Fits beautifully, just slides right in there, looks great. So now I need to cut this off at a 9 16th inch length. So I'm using my ruler up against the parting tool to get those two surfaces aligned so I can have a calibrated starting point for my DRO to measure that dimension, which is non-critical because it's called out as a fractional dimension, but, uh, you know, accuracy, why not? So I'm getting that dialed in on my digital readout. My particular readout shows fractions and decimal inches, which is convenient. So I'm going to go in slowly and carefully here. Because parting is such sweet sorrow. And there it's coming off in a moment. And you can see a slight rim there because I ground my parting tool off a bit uh, wrong there. So you can see that little raised rim. I'm going to come in here with a, a handheld uh, chamfering tool and just break that loose, chamfer it a little bit just to be nice. Now as you can see they've called out a 330 second chamfer which is obviously another low tolerance uh, chamfer. Just bringing in my uh, 30 degree cutter and pressing fairly firmly to get that large surface removed. Then I'm going to come in with a small file and just tidy that up and go just a little bit further. I wanted to go a bit further in than uh, I had gone with the cutter, which uh, stalled out when it hit the body of the cutter. So now I'm going to test fit the cylinder plug in the cylinder, and oh my, it just slides right in, and it was supposed to be an interference fit. My cylinder was a tad oversized, so it's nothing Loctite 638 can't fix. So, two more tiny Sterling engine parts complete. Please give me a like if you've enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you want to see the rest. I've got a lot more videos involved in getting this thing finished. Stick with me.